Are you all right, dude? I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Are you okay? Are you all right? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mark. Welcome to Villa Park. Welcome to LT Turf. Taking care of your lawn was a sport. What sport would it be? Curling. Why? I don't know. I just <laughs> wanted to say curling is the most obscure sport I could think of. Um, because it's unique. Because it's unique. Thank you. Curling. I think you're were, you're were with something. Some finesse. Curling has finesse, and uh, it's unique. And everybody's like, "Oh, what's this guy doing? That's a little <laughs> bit unique over there. What he's got going on?" Uh, pretty much until that rock, like, collides with the other rock, and then you've got some chaos. What is your dream lawn and garden vacation destination? Oh man, maybe like England, kind of where it started, where lawns sort of started. You know, Australia has a lot of awesome, you know, native vegetation, New Zealand and all of that stuff. That'd be cool to see a lot of stuff there. But in terms of actual lawns, I think some of the uh, like London lawns would be interesting, like English, English gardens, English lawns. Welcome to my yard. But before we take a look around here, I want you to take a look around the rest of my town, Villa Park, Illinois. I love this town. It means a lot to me. And here's why. But yeah, this was the uh, Chicago Aurora Elgin Railway. Um, this basically took passengers from the city out into what was the country back then, you know, in the uh, turn of the century. Um, and it's right in my backyard here. So I love having this back here. It's awesome. So yeah, the Ovaltine factory is awesome. Um, it was 1914-ish till about 1988 is kind of when it was uh, going and functioning. Um, and it kind of was the hub of this town. That's the gentleman's house that owns Fuel and Cream, and it's a Sears home. Villa Park has one of the highest concentrations of Sears homes uh, around here. What it is, is you can order a home uh, from the Sears catalog, and down to the very last nail, they, they, they ship it to you via train, and uh, you, they build you a home. Uh, this was in the early, early uh, turn of the century, 19... 15, 1920, 1940. I'm not sure when they stopped doing it, but. Pioneer Garden and Feed, dude. This is a 100 year old garden and feed shop. Um, this is the real deal in there. You've got Bill Cargus, the botanist extraordinaire. That post office is, is a, uh, I forgot what they classify it as. Someone out there maybe knows, but that was classified as a certain, like the highest level post office you could have because it was so active with the Ovaltine factory. Going back to the Christmas story reference, it's uh, all the kids mailed in their, their little proof of purchases off of Ovaltine to get the, the Captain Midnight decoder ring or whatever that Ralphie was using. They were so inundated with mail by it that they had to have like a that certain tier post office. So if you woke up tomorrow morning and all of your grass was stolen, <laughs> what would you do? Like, well, what kind of grass would you replant? I would probably replant. You're not going to want to hear this, but I would go all clover. A clover lawn? All clover, all day. No, that could be pretty cool. It can be very cool. That doesn't upset me at all. I think it'd be really it neat. fixes nitrogen, man, and you never have to do a damn thing to it. And then, obviously, when it flowers, it's beneficial to all of the, uh, the pollinating insects and all of that stuff. It stays super green, man. Yeah. So Mark, yes. if you had to choose a celebrity <laughs> to take care of your lawn for a month, who would you choose? That's an easy answer. I need not even think about that. 
it's left tool because he never gets the love, man. I, <laughs> everyone's always going on about this right tool, this and that, and this guy's always in the shadows. He's the funniest dude on YouTube. I don't care what anybody says, man. But no, yeah, this is my yard. Um, as you can see, 1914, this house was built. So this is an old home. Uh, it's an old lawn. Like I was saying before, the um, you know this was all developed under tall grass prairie. The prairie path is right in my backyard practically, and this was all pretty much way back in the day, you know, tall grass. When, when I first met my wife in the early 2000s, she brought me here to meet her grandmother. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with the yard and her grandmother. She was an amazing lady, but I fell in absolute love with this yard. Um, and lo and behold, here it is. Long story short, I'm here today. I kind of had the who's who of weeds in here at any given point. We hand pulled a lot of it. We've hand pulled a lot of Violet. We've hand pulled a lot of Creeping Charlie. Well, my wife and I used to have contests to see who could pull out the longest piece of Creeping Charlie. I have used herbicide here and there. It's been a long time since I have. I've, I've made the jump to full organic within the last several years. Um, so I, I don't even really use salt-based fertilizers. I don't use any of the killicides. I don't irrigate necessarily. My whole MO here has been building the soil and more specifically teeming with that soil uh, food web. You know, kind of getting, um, sort of taking the uh, riding shotgun while all of my soil biology sort of takes the steering wheel to create that beautiful porous kind of, uh, you know, topsoil that everybody's looking to achieve. So, you know, it, this thing bounced back from, from drought into the condition it's in now. And that's all testament to the soil. I love gardening with native plants. You know, I do have some ornamental uh, horticulture type stuff, hostas, you know, some exotics and all of that, but I try to put everything in here um, that, that, that's native. You know, a lot of my stuff has gone dormant already, uh, but I, I love the look of dried and, 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 and kind of, you know, uh, dormant vegetation. So my front yard is kind of small, it's over there. I've got my two red maples up here and the grass does grow very well under there. You can grow grass in, uh, in pretty deep shade there. Um, you kind of wiggle around here into my backyard. You know, again, I, I top dressed with compost this year. Didn't really need to do it. My, my only reasoning behind doing it was the fact that I could get 10 yards for free. All my stuff is pretty much toasted now and dormant. Um, but this is my shade garden. But again, you guys are gonna have to come back in the uh, middle of the year, um, or the middle of the summer, and um, you know, check it out. What is your dream mower? Dang, that's a good one. Uh, my dream mower would have to be some crazy like 1800s contraption. Steampunk, steampunk, uh, did you ever hear of steampunk? But it's this big, humongous metal, contraption dude like the first ever lawn I would want the first lawnmower ever made a scythe if you're going back that far that'd be cool too <laughs> a scythe would work you got any dude no I Did should Toro a, send you a scythe man Toro scythe just saying So come on over here and we'll take a look at uh, my headquarters here. It's a dude space, but uh, you know, so just kind of starting right off the bat here, I guess I can go down the line. Um, this is my my little rake cinder block holder thing, right? These are essential tools, everybody knows these, but uh, you gotta have a good hoe. Every gardener needs a good hoe and I don't mean that, uh, you know, pun fully intended there, but you do need a good hoe. This is a half moon edger. I can't say that I really use this much. I just use a straight shovel and now just my weed whacker to maintain it. But these are nice. What's cool about this is that I bought this at a, a garage sale. This girl's dad had just passed away and she was selling her dad's uh, garden tools and she was real broken up and she was super psyched that I bought, you know, his tools, a couple of his tools. And uh, again, that's going back to old tools have souls in them, you know. You gotta, you gotta carry on that energy. So that's what's cool about this. Uh, what else? I got pictures of my grandpa here um, in Indiana. He was a gardener uh, extraordinaire. God bless you. That's Willard Rodriguez. He was an amazing gardener, lawn, and uh, you know, soil man. That's me with the mesh, half mesh, the half shirt. 
1985, half shirts were a thing. Okay, so don't judge me there. Uh, this is a Scott's Lawn Care book that's hanging here. A quick reference, it's a waterproof book. It's pretty cool. Um, this right here is my favorite piece of equipment if I would ever get it off of this nail. Anyways, yeah, right here. This is a soil knife. But a soil knife is cool to have. You can, uh, you know, you can plant with it. You can, you can divide perennials. You can cut into some gnarly root systems with this thing. That whole kind of strip of native plants that I have on the side of my yard, I dug that all out with this on my hands and knees like an idiot. This is a a uh, grass shear. I just got the I got the box still, this vintage box right here hanging up. It's the miracle grass shear. All right, it's when you use this, it's like a miracle, dude. Uh, standard tools, you got the bow rake holding tools. Isn't that crafty and Pinteresty? It's really neat, that's cool. Garage sale find, vintage, vi I'm all about vintage, dude. I love vintage lawn care stuff, vintage, uh, you know, sprinklers. I've always been a fan of the uh, traveling sprinkler. This is the boxy 70s version. It's heavier than my life, man. This thing is actually incredibly heavy, but uh, it, it, you, you lay a hose, pattern all out and it'll it'll propel itself along the hose these will dig into the ground this thing twirls and spins it's awesome another vintage item here's these scott's these scott's uh drop spread if i had to put a year on this i'd say probably probably early to mid 60s kind of mad men area uh, era uh, maybe earlier i don't know but I, I love i love the uh the vintage aspect and it works awesome I love this thing, all right, to quote Michael Scott, I love this trimmer. Uh, but no, Eagle Rules, dude, I want to get the uh, the hedge trimmer attachment so I don't have to blow out my shoulder when I'm trimming over there. So Eagle is definitely awesome, I love that. Here's my mower. Here's my mower, dudes. I wanted to get back to a lightweight, standard push mower, old school, um, but one that was decent. I kind of did my shopping between, you know, a couple of different brands. I went with this Cub Cadet, which is essentially by MTD. I realized that, you know, it's not the most fancy uh, mower in the world. Over here, you got a potting bench, compost tea brewer. I'm not going to get into all of that right now. That is a story for another time. Compost bins. This is technically not a three compartment bin. That's my third compartment, the, the brush pile. As that kind of decomposes, I'll put that into this, into this compartment. You know, this final compartment is uh, is the good stuff, but this already, this had the uh, the supercharged biosolid uh, coal composted compost in there already anyways. This right here is my best piece of equipment. I can't even tell you the things that I've hauled in here besides children. And I guess that's it for the mower and all of my equipment, man, all of my lawn tools. What's your favorite lawn care YouTube channel? Putting me on the spot, my brother. Oh man, you know what? There's there's some good ones out there, man. Honestly, and I don't mean to get all sappy, but when I <coughs> kind of was, yeah, I kind of met these dudes, these lawn tools. Ooh, so wow. funny, so hilarious. What else am I supposed to say? <laughs> uh, so just just beautiful dudes, beautiful dudes. Um, but also, oh, there, thank you. So, what was the question? Um, honorable mention goes out to you know some of those guys that have a little bit of knowledge your your john perry's and your your alan haynes you know those guys are all right john john perry that hippie that flip-flop wearing hippie with his mountain bike and his stuff no, i'm just kidding dude i love john perry dude as far as i'm concerned john perry takes the whole thing well you've seen my lawn you've seen a little bit of my town I gotta go trick-or-treating with my family now. So get off my turf. Also, oh, there, thank you. So, what was the question? Um, the, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Is that where that was you supposed could, to go? Say, say, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could eat it for breakfast, but it's beautiful, nutrient-rich topsoil. I'm gonna get run over. Don't get run over. Thanks. A, we had an art gallery down here. Um, it was awesome. Shut up, man. I'm talking to the lawn tools, dude. I'm making a video here. What a joke. Hey, man. 
all of us, me, my wife, my three kids. Whoa, hey there. Um, <laughs> that is a darn good one. My dream mower. There's my neighbor. What's up, John? Uh, all right, so the story on mowers for me is that I've had a good amount of them.